Hey guys, Zaru you here, and today I'm gonna walk you through some Rogue Mage 2v2, this time from Mage point of view. We did some Mage walkthroughs, some Rogue walkthroughs, but I wanna go give you guys some more Mage walkthroughs to some of these games um, get a little complex and like exactly how you're supposed to win this game in, in each situation because um, as Rogue Mage 2, things can get a bit sticky sometimes. So we're gonna walk you through um, one of those games here. So this is on Black Rook Hold Arena. Um, we're playing Sub Rogue Fire Mage, which in my opinion is the best iteration of Rogue Mage 2's currently, but there's a lot of different ways you can play this. You could play Frost Sub, you could play um, Arcane Sub, you could play Assass Fire and go for really fast kills. Um, I don't know how good Outlaw is right now in twos. I, I probably wouldn't suggest it. The reason I like Sub Rogue, and it's probably like a hot question, like in, even in the comments right now, like, why are you playing with a sub? I thought Assass was better. Um, Assass is better in threes, and I think Sub Sub's okay in threes, but not maybe not quite as powerful. And the reason I personally like playing the sub rogue in twos is because we have kidney shots and we have the cheap shots um, with Shadow Dance. So we have kidney on the healer, cheap shot on the DPS. They're both controlled. We get the follow up CC and then we burst. That's why I like playing the sub rogue in twos. And if you're a mage, I'd recommend it as well. Although sub rogues are kind of extinct right now, so it might be hard to find one. Anyway, we get the sap onto the druid and we get to open up onto the warrior. So the, one of the reasons why I actually don't like this opener that we just did right here is that the warrior gets to blade storm, which means we can't cheap shot him when he's in that blade storm. So if we sap a good warrior, and this guy's uh, playing it pretty well, is going to know to blade storm immediately, and he's gonna essentially immune our opener, knock the rogue out of stealth, and basically our whole opener's a lot weaker. What we could have done instead is I would sheep the warrior, we would kidney shot the druid, into a ring of frost and then out of that sheep guess what he can't blade storm well sheep unless he trinkets if he trinkets it's good anyway but if he's sheep then we open him on out of that that would be much cleaner so we could have done an opener like that anyway we get the sap into a resap we get the greater pyroblast and he actually trinket reflects and fears um which isn't terrible right we actually got a lot of cooldowns and this is like actually right before that this is really what i want to highlight and like drill into your guys's heads right I polymorphed the warrior at whatever, 75, 80% life because the go is over. And this is the number one key thing to recognize as Rogue Mage 2s is when is your go over, right? When your go is over, you need to poly the guy you were just trying to kill. I don't care if he's 10% life. I don't care if he's 50% life. I don't care if he's 100% life. As soon as you recognize he's not going to die and your go is over, AKA, Iron Bark comes out, Hots come out, um, or maybe you fuse all your damage and you kind of healed through it, your goes over, what does that mean? That means we don't have a healer on our team, we don't have a priest, this is not 3v3, this is twos without a healer. I need to sheep the warrior right here or my rogue is going to die. Look, Stormbolt came out, my rogue has no trinket. If I don't sheep the warrior right now, the warrior will kill my rogue. I sheep the warrior, we have the kidney shot on the druid. What this allows is for my rogue to run away, re-stealth, we live to see another day, and we do it again in 20 seconds when we have diminishing returns off. Next 20 seconds, I polymorph the warrior once, polymorph the warrior twice, polymorph him a third time, frost nova him, run away, kite him, and then we set up for that next go. I still have ice block, I still have temp shield, I still have trinket, I still have dragon's breath, I have a lot I can do. Right now, it's about my rogue. My rogue's 80% life, he has no trinket, and we're really trying to have my rogue escape, okay? So, as I'll continue to play the game. Kidney shot comes out, I'm preemptively kind of running, warrior gets out, I resheep the warrior, warrior gets dispelled, I resheep him. Um, again, I actually get charged and kicked, and we frost nova him, and he can't get out of this frost nova, because guess what? The druid already used the dispel onto the polymorph. My rogue, look at his positioning, he's running into the room, going for the resell, he's not staying in right now. And that's so, so, so critical for the rogue to actually run away and get this resell. If he doesn't get this resell, I mean, we're, we're probably just gonna lose. Once he gets that resell, he can maybe eat in stealth, um, he can regen some life, we can wait for diminishing returns, 13 more seconds until we can actually do another go. That stun DR on the Druid determines that. 13 more seconds, boom, into another go. Um, unless we went the blind sooner and just cheap shot at the warrior. So I'm kind of trying to trying to get that third polymorph onto the warrior. My phone just went off. That's actually Peekaboo texting me. He says, what's up? Okay, maybe we'll queue with Peekaboo in a little bit. What's up, Pika? Say hi to YouTube. Um, but we get, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind this while I was checking my phone, but we got the sap onto the druid as he ran into the room. And this is because stun god got that um, invis off 
um, that reset the stealth, Druid runs in, we get the full sap. Once again, I'm not that big of a fan because the warrior could bladestorm, warrior could pop pre-defensives, or warrior kind of knows this goes happening. Um, we'll see what actually happens here. Mm, warrior runs around, line of sights into the room for this entire sap. And that's why, guys, I always kind of say you should keep the warrior stationary. You should poly him, or you should uh, cheap shot the warrior, kidney the druid, or kidney the druid, cheap shot the warrior. But if it's just a sap on the druid, by the time you actually get that opener, a lot of the times the sap is halfway over, and that's kind of what happens here. Not a huge fan. By the way, in this game, combustion is, um, is, is still off cooldown. I did not use combustion in the opener. A, a lot of these games, you're going to hold combust, Go for a nice slow opener, get some cooldowns, and then save that combust for when you know you can 100 owe someone without trinkets, without CDs. So sap comes out, damage comes out, resap comes out, and this isn't the worst thing in the world. We use combust, we use smoke bomb, true would uses tree trank, we get the blind and heat trinkets, and and this is this is really good. We got the parries from the warrior that die by the sword damage reduction. We got the druid's trinket, we got the druid's tree form. Um, I did use combust, we did use smoke bomb, we did use blind. So pop quiz, what do we do right here? Right here, it's pretty much, um, it's going to be a reset. My rogue is defensively shadow, shadow dueling the, the druid. I'm kind of just keeping him so he can't heal the warrior. But the full hoth that died by the sword. I mean, I have four seconds of combustion left. I can try to get the warrior a little bit lower. See if we can continue pressure into a kidney, into a sheep, something like that, and win the game. Or we can go ahead and uh, my rogue can go, go for a re-stealth off that shadowy duel. I can sheep the warrior, we can reset, and we can do it again here in 13 or 16 seconds, I guess, is the dim diminishing return that matters here on the stun DR onto the warrior. So, either one doesn't really matter too much which one we pick, but um, we, I, at the end of the day, I personally like to play a little bit more defensive with a lot of these goes. So, warrior uh, has full hots, my rogue is uh, in that entangling roots, he's about 50% life, so we should just sheep the, war uh, sheep the warrior and go for a reset here right they have no trinkets they have no uh, he might have four banner still they have no trinkets still they have no die by the sword uh, i mean tree forms already halfway running out if we just live we win at this point right Stormbolt comes out and i'm actually a little bit slow i, sh I should be sheeping the warrior here in my opinion um but we decide to kind of just um my rogue just tanked the damage for a little bit and now we're doing our go in my opinion what i just did was a mistake i should have sheeped the warrior um maybe 10 seconds ago like if i rewind the clip right here, I probably should have went for a sheep on the warrior. Um, I, I was getting him pretty low. We got spell reflect, but right now he's in tree. He's not really. Not, I think I should have sheep the warrior right here, um, personally. So um, I would have sheeped him back to full HP, but my rogue would not have taken um, all of this damage here either. And by the time we actually get the setup, look, he's full HP anyway. He's 92% life, 95% life. As soon as the ghost starts, he's 97% life. That's why the sheep wouldn't have mattered, but my rogue would have been instead of 40% life right now, my rogue would have been 70% life, and that makes all the difference. So. In my mind, that actually is a mistake that I, I didn't go for that. But we do get the kidney shot into the Ring of Frost. Going for some more big damage here. Going for that Meteor, Double Fire Blast, Pyro Blast. The Rallying Cry comes out from the Warrior and the War Banner. So those are two minor cooldowns coming out once again. My Rogue is so smart the way he plays this. He knows that we weren't going to kill right there. Look at when my Rogue starts running. This is so important. My Rogue is already gone. My Rogue already, already ran right here. He gets the, the cheap shot, and then while his cheap shot's still on, he gets that third cheap shot, and look, he's already running with sprint behind the pillar. He knows that he has no trinket. If he gets stunned, if he gets um, charged, you know, mortal strike execute, game is over. He's dead. He gets the triple cheap shot, runs behind the pillar. Druid can't stop him. He's in the ring of frost with no trinket. Rogue runs behind the pillar, gets the re-stealth, and then we live to see another day when we get those minor cooldowns. So... Rogue's playing it incredibly well, kind of knowing that he has to run here. Now, I still have Ice Block, Trinket, Temp, everything, right? So I can stay out here. That's fine. War Banner's up. I'll go ahead and kill it um, so I can start sheeping this warrior if I want. I can cast a Greater Pyroblast, can fake out the Reflect. Boom, we do that. We fake out the Reflect. Dragon's Breath now onto the warrior and sheep onto the warrior. This is a good sheep in my opinion. Um, it kind of keeps, I mean, we've, we've talked about it multiple times in this video, but it keeps the warrior off my Rogue. Helps my Rogue get that re-stealth and, you know, just keeps the warrior kind of stationary. Now, now is our time for the win, right? We have, they have no trinkets, no rally, parry, die by the sword, uh, rally, uh, any defensive cooldowns at all, they pretty much don't have. So we need to get one good setup where maybe I get a greater pyro blast, um, throw out some fire blast damage and the warrior should die. Go for that re-sheep and maybe one more sheep and start casting a greater pyro blast. Warrior has no reflect and boom, we get the greater pyro. It's in the air right now. Kidney shot comes out. 
tons of damage lands my uh rogue sheep shots onto that storm bolt so they're, they're actually both stunned right now it's not too much damage coming out but the full sheep now comes out on to the druid more and more damage coming out this guy gets so low get feared will have forsaken it do get kicked dragon's breath instead no ring of frost quite yet and go for a half sheep he does there is a slight gap because i got kicked in that polymorph um, and I guess it's going to be another go once again. And this is what I was talking about right at the start of this video is that games as Rogue Mage 2s can get super sloppy. We really should have won right there if that was executed a little bit better. Um, it did get stopped in the follow-up CC and now the Warrior's gonna have Trinket again. So now it's just this back and forth, like cat and mouse type of game where we're running, we're trying to get as many cooldowns and then running, like it's just back and forth, right? Uh, back and forth for a while now. Now Druid um, has no stringer for 40, so we can definitely still set something up. Um, we're still in a good position. Look how my rogue's playing this. He's blind and siding the warrior, going for that restell, and um, the Druid isn't really gonna be able to kill him too much. I mean, he can heal through a lot of that with just Crimson File and passive health reach. Now if the warrior comes out, I sheep him. If he doesn't come out, then uh, he's blind and sided by the rogue. The trinket comes out on the Stormbolt. I sheep the warrior uh, once, twice, three times. Casting the Crater Pyroblast, fake the Reflect once again. Um, my Rogue's still running, Circle's doing a great job. Kidney Shot comes out onto the Druid, into that full Ring of Frost on the Druid. And now look, the Warrior's line of sighting. And this isn't terrible, right? This might sound seem like a failure. It's like, okay, you got the full CC, now it's time to burst, right? Yes and no. So we're, we're also trying to live and run away and reset. And now that we have the Druid in the ring with no Trinket, my Rogue can stay out here. If my Rogue stays out here, not in the room, and the Warrior stays in the room because he's trying to avoid the go, guess what? My Rogue gets a restell uh, mission accomplished, right? So if we actually if we actually do get that restell, it's fantastic. I actually run into the room and go for that Dragon's Breath into the Sheep onto the Warrior. It's actually immune for one more second. Frost over him and then get the sheep onto the warrior. And I kind of am just bait, right? I'm playing bait for my rogue to get the restealth, and he does get that restealth. And a lot of you might be asking, why doesn't the warrior go on you more? I mean, I have a lot of defensives. I'd be able to live for a while against this warrior in that 1v1. But if the warrior did go onto me, then my rogue would be able to play different. My rogue would be able to peel for me, and the, and the roles would be reversed. So we get the sheeps on the warrior. Greater Pyro Blast comes out. Try to fake the reflect. He doesn't quite go for it. Have that combustion once again. Pre temp shield the storm bolt. Um, really, really nice there. We're going for a bunch of damage here. The kidney shot comes out. I, I don't have Ring of Frost for 13 seconds, so I can't actually get the ring out of the kidney. My rogue does go for that Vanish Sap. He does actually miss it. Blind comes out. The shadowy uh, trinket comes out on the blind, and then the shadowy duel comes out onto the trinket. That's why shadowy duel is so good in twos right now. And then the full sap off the shadowy duel. Picture perfect. And the warrior eventually goes down. So that was kidney, blind, duel the trinket into a sap. And um, in Shadowy Duel, guys, you can use dance abilities like Cheap Shot, like Ambush, or um, Shadow Strike, and like Sap. So we actually just kind of like line of sight and let the Druid uh, drop combat, then boom, Sap the Druid as I was continuing pressure onto the Warrior. And then boom, the Warrior finally went down. So guys, not all games are picture perfect. This game, this game was great, but it took a little bit longer than it should have. But we're constantly running away. We're constantly sheeping. We're constantly peeling for each other. And then eventually everything lined up and got a long CC chain and we got that kill. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. In this specific video, I actually went a lot more slower pace and really broke down every single part of the process. If you guys enjoyed that aspect of this video, um, also make sure to thumbs it up. Thumbs it down if you didn't like the video. Talk to me in the comments down below about what you guys want to see in the upcoming uploads. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. A bunch of content over there. And of course, check out the daily live streams over on Twitch TV as well. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Peace.